Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the different effects from diabetes type 2 medication, okay? And this is based on someone's question. They wanted to know the different effects. Uh, this lady was on different medications and she wanted to know uh, what they were doing to her body. So I said, tell you what, I'll just create a little video on it just to give you the overall picture. All right, so now we have pancreas that makes the hormone insulin. Insulin is traveling through the blood. It responds to carbohydrates, okay? And it actually, uh, even protein too, it's, its goal is to lower the blood sugar. So the pancreas releases insulin. It travels through the blood and goes into an insulin receptor. The insulin receptor then receives it and then creates an effect, one being lowered blood sugar and then another being storage into either glycogen, which is stored sugar, or cholesterol, or fat. So there's mainly three different effects that uh, certain medications create in this scenario. One is there's certain medications that increase the production of insulin being outputted right through here. Okay, so there's this little cell called a beta cell that makes insulin. So one of the medications that is actually very popular is called sulfonylurea. So this medication actually increases the amount of insulin being produced by the pancreas. Now, if someone has type 1 diabetes and they don't produce any more insulin, this will not work. So this just enhances what's already there. All right, the problem with this medication is that they also use it for an herbicide. Yeah, because it blocks certain amino acids in plants. So I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So is it safe for humans? Well. I don't know, there's some definitely some side effects. One being increasing risk of cardiovascular disease and death. That's right, that's the warning on the label. Uh, so here you are trying to regulate your blood sugars, but then it's increasing your chance of dying from a heart attack. Okay, not good. All right, another mechanism is works on the receptor, the insulin receptor. People with diabetes type two have insulin resistance, so their receptors are not receiving that hormone very well. This is going to create a failure of the return feedback loop to the pancreas. So we're not going to get the shutoff, like the turnoff, because it's an incomplete communication. So the more that the receptor is blocked or resisting or downgraded, the more the pancreas is going to produce more insulin. So we're going to have a situation where we have a lot of insulin, but it's not really working in the body. So if you're going to take this medication, that can actually just add more insulin to a body that has too much insulin. The problem is it's not working over here, so you're not getting the effect, but you're getting a lot of the side effect of having the high levels of insulin. So metformin, and there's other names for metformin, increases the sensitivity of insulin. So it allows the insulin to be received more, okay? And there's actually a black label on metformin uh, that talks about one of the side effects being lactic acidosis, which is um, a pretty serious condition uh, because the pH goes way, way up. One of the real natural remedies for lactic acidosis is vitamin B1. The problem is metformin also depletes B1, so it kind of prevents the, um, the countering of that lactic acidosis. So it is a concern, a problem, but the way that metformin works is by um, opening up this receptor right here, okay? So then therefore the pancreas can actually lower the amount of production of insulin being pumped out. Okay, then the other mechanism is just by giving someone more insulin. So a lot of diabetics type 2 are also given more insulin on top of it, just straight insulin. So it's not necessarily causing the pancreas to make more. It's just giving you more insulin. Well, here's the problem. In type 2, many times the pancreas is already producing too much insulin because of the insulin resistance, not creating this feedback loop, this turnoff. So again, we're dumping too much insulin into the system for the purpose of keeping the blood sugars regulated and normalized at the expense of increasing cardiovascular risk because that's another side effect from taking more insulin is you increase risk of heart problems right there, weight gain, and hypoglycemia, okay? So because what happens, we have this push down blood sugar situation. Now you're irritable. Now uh, you have they tell you to eat more you know, sugar or carbs to raise the sugar, and then we start the cycle over again. So in summary, we have uh, several mechanisms. One is to produce more 
insulin from the pancreas. Another is to just give more insulin, and the other is to increase the absorption of insulin. All right, so what's missing from the picture? Okay, what's missing from this picture is focusing on the root cause of why the body has high sugar in the first place. And that is because there are too many carbs in the diet. This is ignored. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It was called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special, if you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.